three in a row. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Now, generally, I wouldn't push out two videos that are so similar to each other, uh, really close together, but honestly, I wanted to kind of get through this optic review because I have a lot of other things to review and I wanted to throw another optic on this guy uh, to review. So, first off, this is the UTG one to four and a half. Uh, this is their SCP-3 lineup of scopes. So it's in the same lineup as their long eye relief versions and their one to eights. Speaking of one to eights, we will compare it with the venerable one to eights that I have on a lot of my guns. I Right now I own three one to eights from UTG. You can find them for about 150 bucks, 160 bucks, depending on where you buy them from. This optic right here, the one to four and a half, comes in at about 85 to 100 bucks with rings that aren't really that good. So generally I toss the rings and get a AccuSync mount and call it good. So now before we get into a lot of the negatives of this scope, let's go ahead and talk about why I bought it and what I was really hoping for with this optic. Uh, so basically it's a much cheaper version of the one to eights as you would expect. It's one to four and a half, which is a very decent magnification range. And it makes a lot of sense for a 10.5 build, which is it, which it's on currently. It's a little bit shorter of a package than the one to eight. So for instance, the one to eight is a little bit over 10 inches long. This is just under nine. So it shaves you about an inch and a half. Um, it's also five ounces lighter. This optic only weighs 16.8 ounces. So it's pretty lightweight and right in where you want it for a one to four and a half. It does have turrets on it, really tall target turrets on it, which are easy to adjust. Zeroing these guys is always nice. Um, but on a on an optic that I'm really not going to be doing much dialing, I really don't uh, prefer tall rings on them. They're a little bit more uh, fragile than like cap turrets or anything like that. So on this, I would prefer cap turrets. They'd also be a little bit lighter and of course stronger, like I mentioned. So basically what I was hoping for with this scope was to get the exact same quality of the one to eight, uh, just in a one to four and a half. So basically you would save yourself some issues that you get when you have a large magnification range like eight X. So for instance, on the one to eights at eight X, you have a little bit more distortion at eight X. So at 8X, you definitely do have some reduction in glass quality just because that's a huge magnification range to go through, especially on a budget optic. At 1X, it's perfectly clear. You have your parallax set at 100 meters, just like with the uh, the one to four and a half. So really what I was looking for in this optic was a smaller, lighter, cheaper optic um, that didn't come with a lot of the downsides of a one to eight. Um, on top of that, they claim that it has a larger field of view as well. So for instance, on the one to eight, you have a view at 100 yards on 1x of 100 feet. I think it's like 99.8 feet. So pretty much 100 feet at 100 yards, which is actually pretty good. And that's pretty standard with most 1-6s, to 1-8s, to is around 100 feet is good and above 100 feet is getting into really good territory. With this, with the 1-4.5, to you actually get 108 feet at 100 yards, which is really, really good. Unfortunately, the way that they do this is it's incredibly fish-eyed at 1x. So at 1x, the center looks like it's 1.5 almost. It's, it's very, very noticeable, and the edges are about 1, 1.1, somewhere in that range. So at 1x, you have a very noticeable, very jarring fisheye effect. So if you're closer than five yards or even 10 yards, that can be really, really difficult to get over because you're looking at a very warped image. So unfortunately, you know, what you actually end up with is a one is a low power variable scope that's actually not as usable as the one to eight at in close range because the image at one x is so warped. Now at four and a half, it's a very flat image, it's a very clear image, and you don't get any of that distortion that you get at the eight time setting on the larger scope. But again, it's only four and a half. So I didn't have any issue taking this guy out to 300 yards and hitting very, very consistently on a reduced size IPSC target. Um, so the scope itself is very accurate for target practice or anything like that. Four and a half is a one to four and a half, or in this case, realistically, one and a half to four and a half still isn't a terrible magnification range, and you can use it from close work out to medium range and still get good visibility out of it. Now, when you consider this optic in this mount, you're really looking at, at about 110 to 120 dollars. And remember, I got most of my one to eights for about 135. So really, there's only a 15 dollar price difference. But most of the time, if you're if you're paying full price and not buying it on sale, you're spending about 160 to 180 dollars on the one eights and about 100 
hundred bucks for the uh, one to four and a half, depending on what mount you decide to go with. Something that I've been working into all of my optic reviews has been drop testing. So anything that I'm doing from now on is going to have a drop test in it. So this guy's no different. So I put it through a triple drop test from about five feet onto dirt and gravel. Um, the reason I did it three times instead of two times like I normally do is just that when I dropped it on one of the times it actually landed stock Maybe first really and so it didn't really impact the optic at all. So well, after a triple drop again. test at 50 yards, it unfortunately okay. shifted about five inches to the right and about one inch up. So about 10 mm away shift off target. So if you're shooting at anything beyond 25, 50 yards, you're gonna be way off target and not gonna be able to hit what you're shooting at. Now I did that same drop test on a different day in a different area on a one to eight on one of my AR-10s, which is a much heavier gun than this, and I was still able to hit steel at 300 yards. So I was looking at an MOA shift of about one MOA after a drop test on the one to eight on a much heavier gun after dropping it a couple times versus about 10 MOA on the one to four and a half. So I think that the build quality here and the durability, just because the different design, it's a much smaller, it's a little bit more compact design. Um, it's not quite as good as the one to eights, but you're spending more money on the one to eights. Another issue that I have with this guy is with the shorter form factor and the larger field of view, kind of, uh, what you end up with is a little bit tighter of an eye box. So for instance, the eye box on here is four and a half at one and about three at uh, four and a half, which is pretty tight. On the one to eights, you have about five on one X and it's huge on one X. You have a huge forward and backwards uh, visibility eye box on one X on the one to eights. And on here, uh, you have a pretty small, tight eye box all the way through. Now on four and a half, it's still pretty forgiving on here. So you can get an eye box all the way up here at about three inches, maybe out to about three and a half. So it's still fairly forgiving um, and definitely better than it is on one to eight. But of course you're not at eight magnification. So generally speaking, in pretty much every way, the one to eight is a better optic in just about every way. But of course you're spending a little bit more money. Another quick thing to note is that this one is equipped with the mill dot reticle, uh, not my favorite reticle. And unfortunately on the one to four and a half, they don't offer the BG4 reticle, uh, which is great on the one to eights and it's my favorite reticle choice on the one to eights but on here you unfortunately have a mill dot reticle which is usable um, but it takes up a lot of the optic because you have these huge lines going up down left right center and so it doesn't really draw your eye to the center very well um, so it's not really as fast and as I mentioned that one x is really about one and a half uh, which isn't a good thing inside of 10 15 yards but actually outside of about 15 yards that one and a half actually does get you a little bit closer to target and make it a little bit easier to make more precise shots uh, say out to 50 60 yards uh, one and a half is actually a little bit better than one x in that terms for getting on target quickly now as i mentioned zero did shift on it however nothing broke on it whatsoever zeroing it is still very very easy the turrets um, are very tactile they click in place really nice they use half moa adjustments at 100 yards which is just fine now i wish that they were you know it's a mil dot scope so if it was in mil that would make more sense. Um, I prefer MOA scopes versus mil dot scopes, uh, just personal preference and it's a lot easier for me to think about when I'm doing drop calculations at long range. Uh, that being said, this one here has a 50 yard zero, so at 300 yards you're really only lifting it just a little bit above the target. I was shooting at a 12 by 20 at 300 yards, no problem. This guy here is, is the gun's fairly accurate and the scope is just fine. Uh, now one of the last features that we're gonna talk about on here is the um, uh, illumination. The illumination has their patented 36 colors of illumination, which you don't really need. Um, and they're not quite bright enough for daylight. They are tinted, so you can definitely tell that it's on daylight bright in the sun, that sort of thing. If it's overcast, you'll definitely be able to pick it up a lot better, which is gonna help you in close range, uh, pick up the reticle a little bit faster. Um, it does have an integral sunshade, just like the one to eights, which is just fine. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention, which is a downside if you're using any other scope mount, is that this guy is a little bit difficult to use with different scope mounts. So basically, the scope area that you have to mount a scope if you're using an actual one-piece scope mount is very, very small. So you have only about four inches of area from beginning to end of where you can mount your scope. Fortunately, the UTG AccuSync mount um, is only about three and a half inches apart, so it's very close to not being able to fit on here but if you have anything longer like one of these guys um, this is just a different style one you can find these aluminum ones on eBay for like uh, 30 bucks or so um, but these guys are about four four and a half inches apart so you cannot fit them on this scope because the place where you can mount your scope 
because of that 28 millimeter objective lens um, is very, very small, which is one downside of these optics. And like, again, like I said, that one and a half X uh, a close range, if you're doing a lot of close range stuff, isn't anywhere as good as the one X on the one to eight. So honestly, there's not a whole lot of things that I really like about the scope, especially when compared with the higher end offerings that are really only a few bucks more, uh, depending on where you're getting them from. Uh, so really, I don't really recommend the one to four and a half, really the one and a half to four and a half, unless you're looking for a sub $100 LPV for for a fun gun, for a target gun, for something that's not serious in any way. Now, you can still use it for varmint hunting or for target shooting or anything like that, and it's still perfectly usable. I didn't have any zero shift on me under normal recoil, uh, but when I did the drop test, like I said, it did shift about 10 M away. So keep that in mind when you're using it. Um, I don't know if I would trust it on any higher calibers. 5.56 I'm sure is fine, 300 blackouts fine, uh, but 7.62 by 39 or, um, 308 or anything like that you're probably going to be close to the limits of what the scope is going to be able to hold in terms of recoil um, so not my favorite design it does have a lot of drawbacks and a few positives for instance it is still smaller and lighter than the one to eights um, but really the one to eights are only about 20 21 ounces versus about 16 17 ounces on this guy um, so there's not a huge amount of savings and really I prefer the advantages of having the 1 to 8 magnification range, better reticle options, and better glass at 1x. Um, but like I said, for under 100 bucks, it can be a good option and it might be one of the better options for under 100 bucks, but generally speaking, um, I think that there are a lot better options for only about 50, 60 bucks more and even less in some cases. So that's pretty much it for the video guys. I know that this one here is a little bit shorter uh, than my usual videos, but like I said, it's very similar to the one to eights and I really kind of just wanted to get it out of the way so I could put another optic on that guy because I have more optics and more stuff to review, more fun stuff to review. So I really kind of just wanted to get this video out, out of the way and uh, say my piece on it. So uh, let me know what you guys think down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace off. Hey you. Yeah, you. What are you still doing here? The video's over. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you still here? Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. The choice is yours. But if you do subscribe, thanks. And I like pizza. Peace off. Alright. Can I stop? Yeah.